I'd like to start with some free fall problems. These are problems where an object is falling toward the surface of the earth with the force of gravity acting on it and it has a constant acceleration in that case as long as we ignore air resistance and we often will. That's how these problems will work. Now we've done constant acceleration problems in a horizontal direction and we had equations like x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a sub x t squared and I've put subscripts on the velocity and the acceleration just so we keep it straight. Uh, v sub x is equal to v naught x plus a sub x t and we can make this equation a little bit more applicable the next one if we say v2 squared minus v1 squared equals 2 a sub x delta x and delta x in this case might be written as x2 minus x1 and so now we've gotten rid of the v naught down here at time zero. We could pick any time interval we wanted to or any distance interval that we wanted to. And these are the three constant acceleration equations. Now let's add vertical motion to this. And we're going to let, with the problems we solve, most of the time we'll let up be positive. And so this is how I indicate that that um, this is the positive direction. So key things, number one, up is positive. We can do various things. Sometimes we'll have up is negative, but uh, for the most part, it'll be positive. Um, two, the acceleration is always minus G. And little lowercase g like that is the acceleration due to gravity. That's the rate at which things fall if there is no air resistance. A lot of textbooks say that g is equal to 9.80 meters per second squared. That's the magnitude of the acceleration. I've got a minus sign on here to indicate that the acceleration is downward. And so that's something we have now. This is location dependent on the Earth. There isn't a huge amount of variation, and so 9.80 is probably an okay value, but you'll find that an awful lot of the time I'm going to write it with g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's about what the acceleration due to gravity is in Moses Lake. Actually, it's about 9.806 or something like that, but it rounds to 9.81 meters per second squared. It uh, varies with altitude. Actually, it varies with your distance from the center of the Earth. And because the Earth is somewhat fatter at the equator and gravity gets weaker with distance, it's closer to this value at the equator as you go toward the poles. At the poles, you're closer to the center of the Earth than you are at the equator, and so it's a little bit higher than this there. So it varies, but 9.80 or 9.81, it's not going to make any difference uh, which one you use on problems or not much difference, only in the last significant figure. So we'll just do that. But when I write the equations that become the constant acceleration in this case. Instead, I'll have y equals v sub y equals and so forth. And so here's what we'll get. We'll have y is equal to y naught, that's the position at time zero, plus v naught y t and then it's got minus one half gt squared. And this is assuming y is positive upwards, then it'll get a minus sign. 
Sometimes you'll do problems where maybe you drop a rock from a bridge or you throw something down and you choose Y to be downward, uh, positive is downward, then you'd have a plus sign on here. But uh, in the case where Y is positive upwards, here's what we get. And then we get V sub Y equals um, V naught in the Y direction minus GT. And we'll also have, we can have something like this here. I didn't put X's on there, but you could have um, VY2 squared minus VY1 squared. This would be two different velocities in the Y direction is going to be minus 2G times Y2 minus Y1. And you have to be really careful with signs and uh, keeping track of things when you're using this equation. This one's almost better to use by defining down to be positive, but then you have to do it for the whole problem. But anyway, these are the free fall equations that we can use. And you may see them written in various ways, but that's just the way that I'm going to be using them on these problems. So let's try a problem here and see how it turns out. A hot air balloonist rising vertically with a constant velocity of magnitude 5.00 meters per second releases a sandbag at an instant when the balloon is 40.0 meters above the ground. After it is released, the sandbag is in free fall. Compute the position and velocity of the sandbag at 0 0.250 seconds and 1.00 seconds after its release. Okay, now, when the sandbag is released, the balloon it's in is going upward at 5 meters per second. So is the sandbag. And so its initial velocity is 5.00 meters per second in the positive direction. So that's something that we have. Although the first thing, as soon as I see, recognize that a problem is a free fall problem, I start by writing my free fall equations. Okay, all right. Y equals Y naught plus V naught YT minus one half GT squared. V sub Y is going to equal V naught Y minus GT. And I may just leave those because it looks like I'm very interested in things as a function of time, so I won't try to use that other equation. So let's see what we get here, what I can define. Um, why not? Well, the sandbag is released when the balloon is 40 meters above the ground. Well, so is the sandbag. So why not is going to equal 40.0 meters. V naught y is going to equal 5.00 meters per second. And then G is going to be, I'm going to try to use the 9.80, whoops, Got a decimal point on there, meters per second squared, and uh, try to stay consistent with the book. Although at times, just out of habit, you'll see me use 9.81 meters per second squared, and don't worry about it. It's one part in 980. Won't make a significant difference on the, the answer we get. Now, it says compute the position and velocity of the sandbag at 0 0.250 seconds and one second after its release. Well, to do that, we take these values, substitute them in here, and then plug in those two time values. So let's see what we have. Um, this will be part A here. And first I'll do it. T equals 0 0.250 seconds. Okay, so y will equal y naught plus v naught yt 
minus one half gt squared, which is going to equal y naught is 40.0 meters plus 5.00 meters per second times t here, which is 0 0.250 seconds, minus 1 half times 9.80 meters per second squared times t squared, 0 0.250 seconds squared. Okay, we can calculate that. I get y is 40.9 meters. Then, how fast is it going at that time? Well, v sub y is just going to equal v naught y minus gt, which is starts at 5 meters per second, minus 9.5. 80 meters per second squared times t, which is 0 0.250 seconds. I get 2.55 meters per second at that time. So the sandbag is still on its way up after a quarter of a second. It's risen to a height of 40.9 meters. Let's go ahead and continue on this problem and figure out where it is at one second. At that time, I'm going to just write the y equation with the numbers in here. It'll, well, I'll do it in variable form. V naught or y naught plus v naught y t minus, whoops, supposed to be minus, one half g t squared equals v naught is 40.0 meters plus 5.00 meters per second times 1.00 seconds minus one half times 9.80 meters per second squared times 1.00 seconds squared. Okay, let's see where we are here. Get that y is equal to 40.1 meters. In this previous one, I had that y was 40.9 meters. It's lower now, so something changed between 0.25 seconds and 0.5 seconds, and let's figure out what's going on. V sub y will equal V naught y minus gt, which is 5.00 meters per second minus 9.80 meters per second squared times 1.00 seconds. I didn't talk about the units on the first part, but I've got meters per second here. I can only add or subtract meters per second. Meters per second squared here, but when I multiply by seconds, this second will divide with one of these, and I'll have meters per second. This is gonna be five minus 9.8, and so it's gonna be on the way down. And at this time, it is on its way down. Minus 4.80 meters per second. So somewhere between ha a quarter of a second and one second, that thing stopped rising and is now on its way down. Let's see what else this question asks. How many seconds after its release will the bag strike the ground with what magnitude of velocity does it strike? Well, let's figure out how long it takes to strike the ground. It strikes the ground when y is equal to zero. Well, here's the equation for y. 
let's see what we get out of that. Y is equal to Y naught plus V naught Y T minus one half G T squared. It's going to equal zero. So I'm going to have a quadratic equation here. Um, I'll have Y naught, which is 40.0 meters plus V naught Y 5.00 meters per second times t minus one half times 9.80 meters per second squared times, well, it's just t squared, is equal to zero. That's a quadratic equation in t. Be a little bit careful about this thing because usually when you have a quadratic equations in an algebra class, you have the t squared term first, and then the t term, and then the constant. I've got it written in reverse order. So what can we do? Well, here's my fancy calculator. It's my TI-84 plus CE. I wrote a program for it one time called Quad, and so I'll run that thing. When I run it, program Quad, enter. First thing it wants is a, which is the coefficient on the squared term. Well, in my case, it'll be minus half of 9.80, which is minus 4.90. So we'll go minus 4.90, hit enter. The b term is just five. And the c term is 40. Let's see if we get a reasonable answer for this thing. Uh, root 1 is minus 2.39 and root 2 is 3.41. Now, how do I know which one is correct? Well, the equation that I have here is for an object which is undergoing free fall and when it's 40 meters above the ground, it's going 5 meters per second, it's got that constant acceleration and t happens to be measured from that instant. But this gave me a negative answer. That minus 2.39 is how many seconds before t equals zero that thing could have been launched from the ground. In this case, that value doesn't make any sense. The t value that does make sense is t equals 3.41 seconds. And so that's how long it takes after being let go of going upward at five meters per second at 40 meters above the ground, how long it'll take to hit the ground. The second part of this question asks, or actually part C asks, with what magnitude of velocity does it strike? Okay, well, V sub Y will equal v naught y minus gt, which is going to equal 5.00 meters per second minus 9.80 meters per second squared, gonna wrap that in parentheses, times 3.41 seconds. I'm just plugging right into my v sub y equation here to figure this out. And this will be, now the velocity is minus 28.4 meters per second. The question asks, what's the magnitude of that velocity? Well, the magnitude of that velocity, I'm out of room on this page, but I'm going to write it as magnitude of V sub Y is the speed of it, not the velocity, 28.4 meters per second. And so that's just like an absolute value symbol on there. Okay, so there's that part. Part D on this asks, put it back in front of you. Part D asks, what is the greatest height above the ground the bag reaches? Okay, well, in order to know that, I need to know how long it continues to rise. Here's something you can do with free fall problems. You can figure out 
what its high point is if you do this. Here's what we have. V sub y will equal V naught y minus gt. This thing was going upward when it was released. It'll continue to go upward for a while, but then it'll stop for an instant and start accelerating downward. Okay, when it's on its the entire time it's in free fall, its acceleration is downward. When it's on it's still on its way up, that downward acceleration is slowing it down. I keep thinking I'm talking to people in front of me and I'm not. Um, but anyway, it'll stop it and the velocity will be zero at the high point. Well, I just have to solve for that time. So um, doing two algebra steps at once here. Well, first kick the V naught or the GT across. V naught is equal to GT. The time will equal V naught over G, which is 5.00 meters per second divided by 9.80 meters per second squared, I get 0 0.510 seconds for the time that it goes up. Now, if you remember back a little earlier, it was still on its way up at 0.25 seconds, but by the time the time got up to one second, it was on its way back down and we said that somewhere between 0.25 seconds and one second, it reversed direction. Well, that's when it happened. So what's the height at that time? That's the, what question D asks. Well, that'll be the Y equation. Y equals our usual Y naught plus V naught Y T minus one half G T squared which in this case is going to equal 40.0 meters plus 5.00 meters per second times 0 0.510 seconds minus one half times 9.80 meters per second squared times this time squared 0 0.510 squared. Plug and chug time on this. I get 41.3 meters is the greatest height above the ground. The last part of the question asked me to make A versus T graphs, V versus T and y versus t graphs. I'll start with the a versus t graph. It's pretty simple. A, here's a, and here's t. It only makes sense out to however many seconds the thing is in the air, and let's just suppose this is when it hits the ground, but uh, the acceleration is constant. It's minus 9.80 and if we have our units of meters per second squared up here for the acceleration, it's always the same thing until it hits the ground and then time stops as far as we're concerned. So there's the A versus T graph. Not terribly interesting. Let's make the V versus T graph and I'm going to make it so I can line up vertically the y versus t and v versus t graphs. Okay, so the v versus t graph, v in meters per second. Now, these are just sketches, so t in seconds. This doesn't have to be super accurate, but at time zero, this thing was headed upward at 5.00 meters per second. I'm just going to draw a straight line indicating what that thing does. Um, at 0 0.510 seconds was when it stopped going upward. So the velocity is getting steadily towards zero, starts off at five meters per second and it drops to zero. That's when it stops going up and then it starts to go down. And so here is 0 0.510 seconds right there. 
and it hit the ground at 3.41 seconds. Actually, if we've got seconds over there, I don't need them with the numbers. Hits the ground at 3 point, or 341, and the velocity was minus 28.4 meters per second. So minus 28.4 meters per second. So velocity was 5 meters per second to start with. It dropped to zero here, and then it went negative, constant acceleration all the way through, and it was minus 28.4 meters per second when it struck the ground. And as far as we're concerned with, that's when time stops. Now, what about the y versus t? Well, the y never goes negative. And so if I put the origin over here, here's t in seconds, here's y in meters, it starts off 40 meters above the ground, so 40.0. That's why not. That's where it starts. It continues to go upward until 0 0.510 seconds, but it doesn't go very high. It's only 41.3 meters up or something like that. So it just barely goes higher than it was to start with. And at that time, its curve flattens out. The slope of the y versus t graph is zero at the high point, and then it starts downward. And this is a parabola for this thing. And plunk should be right below here. At 3.41 seconds here is when it strikes the ground. So those are the a versus t, v versus t, and y versus t graphs for this particular thing. Make sure you can look at this v versus t graph and interpret what's going on and relate it to these other two graphs. It's a bit challenging.